in programming, there are many cases where we need to find the minimum or maximum values. Many people would just call the built-in functions without a second thought. But what if I told you there is more to this story? We could also find the mean or max by a direct comparison approach. And at first glance, you might think the building function got to be faster. But let's not assume, let's benchmark. For the sake of comparison, we will use 1 million test cases and we will repeat this experiment 100 times. Okay, here is the average result. So it turns out it will take the built-in function 16 milliseconds to find the mean, while the direct comparison approach did the exact same thing in 7 milliseconds. Interesting, right? The direct comparison is actually faster in this case. And why? Well, the built-in function is a function, which means there is some overhead in calling it. It is also designed to handle multiple arguments, not just two. Our direct comparison approach, on the other hand, is a simple conditional expression that does exactly what we need, not nothing more. But that was just for two numbers. What about input sizes of three or when we have four numbers or when we have five numbers? So you will see that the direct comparison approach is still better, faster, but, um, but the difference is actually fading away. Now, before you go replacing all your mean built-in calls with direct comparison approach, let's talk about trade-off here. While the direct approach is faster, the built-in function is often more readable. It's also more flexible. Remember, it can handle more than two arguments. But what about larger inputs? Let's run another benchmark. And this time, we will modify our direct comparison approach to handle inputs of arbitrary size. And let's run another benchmark with the exact same setup. So again, we're going to generate 1 million test cases. We're going to repeat this 100 times, and let's see what happens. All right, so here is the result. If you look at this result, um, as the size of the input increases, uh, the complexity of both approaches increases, but the direct approach is actually a lot faster for small inputs, while the building function becomes more efficient as the input size grows. But why is this? Well, the first reason might be implementation optimization. Uh, Python, Python builds in functions are implemented in C, which gotta be faster. The other reason is memory access pattern for larger inputs the built-in function, access memory, um, can be a lot more efficient. And finally, vectorization. On some systems, the built-in mean might use vectorized operation, processing multiple elements at once. Okay, so what's the takeaway here? Uh, well, context matter. For a small, frequent operation, direct comparison might be your best bet, and it can actually save you a lot of time and computational resources. But for larger inputs, Let's just stick with our built-in functions for now. On this graph, we are visualizing the relationship between runtime and input size. It's originally a smooth and a continuous spectrum of algorithms. We often add boundaries to separate different complexity classes, such as big ON, big O N log N, N square, and so on and so forth. One might think improvement means moving from one complexity class to another. And all algorithms within the same class, class are created equally. But that's not quite true. Let's take O n band as an example. We may have multiple algorithms, some faster, some slower, but they're all technically big O n because they, are, they fall in this category. So within this band, we have different algorithms and this is where constant factor improvement comes into place. These small improvements can lead to significant real-world performance gains when it comes to high-frequency and larger-scale data processing. Let's consider social media feed generation or content recommendation that perfectly illustrate both larger-scale data processing and high-frequency operations. Let's say the tech team optimizes their algorithm, shaving off just 50 milliseconds. Sounds tiny, right? And for a single user, 50 milliseconds, it might be nothing. 
Well, let's do the math here. Let's say for, for most social media platforms, we have over 100 million of act, daily active users. Uh, let's say if they trigger the feed generation 20 times per day, this can be just going back to your homepage or watching a new content or just refreshing your tab. And now let's scale that to a month. This will add up to 95, over 95 years of processing time saved every single month. Here's a simple problem to demonstrate the importance of constant factor improvement. The problem is we want to find the smallest axis aligned rectangle that contains a given set of 2D points. Well, take a look at this point scattered across our 2D space. To find the smallest rectangle that encloses all these points, we need to determine four values. And now let's, and now let's, the minimum X coordinate, the maximum X coordinate, the minimum Y coordinate, and the maximum Y co coordinate. Once we have all these four values, we can easily calculate the area of the smallest rectangle. But here's the question. What's the most efficient way to find the minimum or maximum values here? There are a few approaches that we can apply here to find simultaneous mean and max. Well, the first approach would be sorting. Uh, we could just simply sort all the points based on their X coordinate, and then once again, based on their Y coordinate. The first and last element of each sorted list would give us the mean and max values. Simple, right? But the problem here is sorting has a time complexity of n log n, and if you can find a linear algorithm to solve this, it's going to be very beneficial. But wait, there is a linear one. We could just build, uh, we could just actually call the build in mean and max separately. However, um, they will work individually on this problem, and uh, they are not optimized for simultaneous mean and max calculation. Now, let's consider this linear approach, though, and let's try to see how this actually works. Hopefully, we can find some ways to apply some constant factor optimization here and come up with a faster method. Okay, so this is how this is going to work. We will try to find the minimum in this array, and um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the first element to our current max uh, current or current mean, and then we will consider all other candidates. We will compare this with every other element in this array. And um, at the end of the day, uh, we will have the global mean. So whenever we found a better mean, we will replace that with the current mean and we go on. So in this approach, we will need n minus one comparison. Now, if we want to do the same to find the max the, with the same approach, we will need twice as many comparisons. Are all those comparisons necessary? Can we do better? Well, here is an idea. The idea here is that we will process our points in pairs, and then this way we will actually, we might be able to do less comparison. Let's actually try them. So depends on whether we have odd or even number of elements, we can find our current mean and max either using the first element of the array or the first two. So after we initialized our current mean and max, then what we're going to do is we're going to take a pair at a time. And the first thing we do, we compare these, actually the elements of this pair with each other. So it turns out one of them is bigger than the other one. And in this case, we will only need to compare the larger element of this pair with the current max and the smaller element of this pair with the current mean. Any other comparison is going to be completely unnecessary. And we keep processing all the elements of this array pair by pair. Therefore, we will need three comparison per two points of our um, array. So that's going to give us three n over two total number of comparison. Now, for evaluation purposes, let's create 50 test cases. And for the sake of comparison, we will exclude uh, the first approach, the sort approach, because this is polynomially slower. And a more interesting comparison is going to be 
uh, the other two approaches that we discussed. Because both of them are linear, one of them does a little bit less comparison versus the other. And here's the result. While both approaches were 100% accurate, one of them, approach number two, the optimized direct comparison approach was 35% faster. This is a significant speed up by a constant factor optimization. And you can tell for a high frequency, large scale application, this can potentially lead into a significant amount of saving in computational resources every single month. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.